Hello everybody, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. This Bible study is going to be on wisdom and knowledge. What is wisdom? Wisdom is knowing how to use knowledge. So, let me, uh, I gave my very, very, very young daughter some wisdom. When she was very, very young, I don't remember how old, maybe a year or two, uh, she liked to stick around the stove and, you know, keep telling them, stay away from the stove, it's hot. So, one day, I uh, had the burner on high and I picked her up and put my arms around her so that her one arm was bound and then I took her second arm by the wrist I took my hand and put it around her wrist and I put her hand and my hand near the hot burning stove not to burn her but so that she would know it's hot. And I held her and my hand there until it was very uncomfortable. Then I pulled it away and uh, she realized, wow, that's not nice. I don't like that. And she never went near the stove after that. So she got wisdom. Knowledge is knowing the stove is hot. Wisdom is knowing to stay away from it if you have no business being there. So. Uh, yeah, knowledge is knowing something. Wisdom is knowing how to make use of that knowledge. And I'm not trying to be a uh, smart, you know. Uh, I'm just trying to get started here, you know. All right, so let's take a look. I might make this two different parts. I'm not sure. But uh, let's get going. Knowledge. All right, so in Genesis chapter 2, now this is the thing. The Bible, the King James Bible has a thing called uh, what I and others, not me exclusively, but others, they call the uh, something, the first time something's mentioned or used. Usually the first time a word or phrase is used uh, the Bible explains in the context, either in there directly or nearby, what the meaning of it is. So in Genesis 2, verse 9, we read, Read, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So, there's good knowledge and there's bad knowledge. We as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ should seek godly knowledge, the tree of life. And we should shun and avoid evil. And uh, let's see, Proverbs 8.13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I Hate. Hmm. Psalms 97.10 Ye that love the Lord hate evil. You know, there's a lot of people that go to church that tolerate evil. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. 
Amos 5.15 Hate the evil and love the good and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. In Deuteronomy 7.15 And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. King David, in Psalms 139.21, he writes, Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? Oh, yeah. So, you know, King David hated those that hated the Lord. So think about that. In Exodus chapter 35, verse 29, the children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord, every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of work which the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord hath called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And he hath filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, and to devise curious works, to work in gold, and in silver, and in brass. Now, I believe this is the uh, making of the tabernacle. Um, God filled him with the spirit, his spirit to be able to do workmanship, you know, with gold and silver and brass. So, uh, when God calls you for a job, he's going to give you the tools that you need. So, let's keep going. All right, we're going to read out of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1 on. Uh, probably not the whole chapter, but... Now, you got to realize something. When God took Israel out of Egypt, he was going to make them a great nation. He was going to be their king. And every king has a kingdom, and every kingdom has laws. I mean, let's face it. God, that's just how it is. All right, verse 1. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you. Isn't that in the book of Revelation? It says that anybody that adds to the prophecies of that book that God would add the plagues that are mentioned in Revelation to him? Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it. And God in Revelation said that if you took away from the words of the prophecies of the book in Revelation, that God would remove, he would remove their name from the book of life. That is is how important that is. Neath shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. Now, Baal was basically a generic name for Lord, but it had become so associated with Satanism that God said, don't call me that anymore. You know, just think about it. You know, back in the 1920s, uh, if you wanted to have a gay time, um, it meant a happy time. Gay meant happy. But the word gay has become, in recent usage, the mean of sodomite. So, you know, basically the same thing. They've hijacked the name Baal. So, the Lord said, nope, don't call me that anymore. 
Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. Oh yeah. You want to follow Satan? You're going to get destroyed. Period. But ye did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, and even as the Lord my God commanded me that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Now, what's a statute? It's a law. Uh, it's not the commandments, but uh, one of the statutes was if somebody got caught kidnapping, they broke a statute. They called it men stealers in the King James. What was the judgment? Well, if you were caught in the mouth of two or three witnesses, uh, the penalty for men stealing or kidnapping was death. The penalty for murder was death. The penalty for witchcraft was death. Uh, the penalty for sodomy was, well, you get the idea. All right, so that was the statutes, the law, the governmental law, and then the judgment was the penalty for breaking the law. All right, verse 6. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Uh, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. And ye came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountains burned with fire, unto the midst of heaven with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness." And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude, only ye heard a voice. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments, and he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Now, people will tell you, oh, well, you know, we don't, that's Old Testament crap. Yeah, so it's better that uh, the United States... I live in the U.S., so, you know, I'm familiar with the U.S., that um, we take a murderer and because of good behavior, we let him out after a couple of years, a few years in prison, and then he can go out and kill again, right? Uh, I think God's ways are better. If somebody murders somebody and you've got two or three witnesses and you're absolutely sure you put that person to death, Guess what happens to the murder rate? It goes down. You know? What can I tell you? But uh, we don't want that anymore. So God says, well, okay, you don't want me for a king? No problem. I'll let You want to let murderers live? Well, guess what? A murderer is going to do what a murderer is going to do. And when you have... So many murders and killings and shootings and crime. Don't come crying to me. I told you what to do, but you don't listen. All right. In Deuteronomy 34, verse 9. Now, 
Joshua was going to take over for Moses after Moses dies. He's going to be the leader. You got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and then after Deuteronomy, the books of Moses, then comes Joshua, the next book in the Bible, book number six in the King James. Deuteronomy 34, 9, And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. Oh, yeah. In 1 Samuel 2 and verse 3, Talk no more so exceedingly, exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Oh yeah, by our actions, our actions are going to be weighed in the balances. So, now, turn to Second Chronicles chapter 1. We're going to read about Solomon here. Now, and verse 1, And Solomon the son of David, Solomon was the son of King David, and Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom. And the Lord his God was with him, and magnified him exceedingly. Then Solomon spake unto all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, and to the judges, and to every governor in all Israel, the chief of the fathers. So Solomon and all the congregation with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon, for there was the tabernacle of the congregation of God, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made in the wilderness. But the ark of God had David brought up from Kirjath-Jerim to the place which David had prepared for it, for he had pitched a tent for it at Jerusalem. Moreover, the brazen altar that Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord, and Solomon and the congregation sought unto it. And Solomon went up thither to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, and offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. In that night did God appear unto Solomon, and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. Now, think about it. God appeared to Solomon and said, Ask what I shall give thee. What would you ask for? Would you ask for a hot-looking spouse? Uh, money? A mansion on the beach? A mansion in the mountains? What? Well, let's read what Solomon said. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me a king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. So, what does Solomon ask for? Verse 10. Give me now wisdom and knowledge. Give me now wisdom and knowledge, that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this, thy people, that is so great? And God said to Solomon, Because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hast asked long life, but hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people, over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like." 
Then Solomon came from his journey to the high place that was at Gibeon to Jerusalem from before the tabernacle of the congregation and reigned over Israel. Wow. Now listen to this. And Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen, and he had a thousand and four hundred chariots and twelve thousand horsemen, which he placed in the chariot cities and with the king at Jerusalem. And the king made silver and gold at Jerusalem as plenteous as stones. And cedar trees made he as the sycamore trees that are in the vale for abundance. So, you know... <laughs> Gold and silver was like stones laying all over the ground, people. You know, that's, think about it. All right, in 2 Chronicles 30 and verse 22. Uh, if I remember correctly, Hezekiah was a good king. And Hezekiah spake comfortably unto all the Levites that taught the good knowledge of the Lord that taught the good knowledge of the Lord. And they did eat throughout the feast seven days, offering peace offerings and making confession to the Lord God of their fathers. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 1 and verse 7, we read, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fear the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools, fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 129. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 2 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. In Proverbs 8.10, the Lord, by, via the Holy Spirit, writes, Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge, what kind of knowledge? Knowledge of the Lord, godly knowledge. And knowledge rather than choice gold. See, knowledge of the Lord is, you know, more important. Proverbs 9.10 The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. All right, let's go to Isaiah chapter 11. Now, this is a messianic prophecy. Verse 1, Isaiah 11, verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Jesse was the father of King David and the grandfather of King Solomon. Verse 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Remember when Christ was baptized of John the Baptist in Jordan, and the Spirit of God came down as a dove? And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked." And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Now, if you don't think this is future, listen to this. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child 
shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Now, when you start seeing lions eating straw, you'll know that, you know, this has been fulfilled. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp. Now, an asp is an extremely venomous serpent. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full, full, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, to it shall the Gentiles seek. That word Gentiles is sometimes translated as nations, sometimes Gentiles. What nations? The nations of Israel, people. To it shall the Gentile seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands and from the islands of the sea. What islands? England? Greece? Verse 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together to be dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Yeah. You know, north, south, east, west. You know, like on points on a compass. And the flat earth people will tell you that this is proof that the earth is flat in a square. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, and with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it in the seven streams of men, and make men go over dry shod. And there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. In Isaiah 28, verse 9, whom shall he teach knowledge? And to whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. See, evangelists are great. They take unbelievers and turn them into babes in Christ. But then you have to feed them milk. But you know what? Babies do not make soldiers. you got to get the baby weaned from the milk and start feeding them meat. Soldiers need strong meat to be able to wage war. And sadly, most people never get weaned from milk. It's sad. In Jeremiah, we are told in 3 and verse 15 that there will come a time that this will happen. And I will give you pastors, uh, you know, ministers, P-A-S-T-O-R-S, -S, not, not pastures that, uh, you know, a cow will, or a sheep will have, but pastors, like clergy. And I would give you pastors according to mine own, uh, according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. But in Jeremiah 4.22, he writes, For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil. But to do good, they have no knowledge. Now, when you read the book of Daniel, you'll know that the Lord gave Daniel 
knowledge, and understanding of dreams. But in chapter 12, Daniel was shown some things that, uh, ooh, well, let's read. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, Michael the angel, right? The great prince, prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at thy time, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. What book? The book of life. Now, people ask me, why does it make a difference who Israel is? Well, Israel is going to be the object of Satan's wrath in the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Rules with God or prince with God. So, verse 2. And many of them that sleep, or, you know, dead, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, Shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. What kind of knowledge? Godly knowledge? Uh, there's a book in the Bible that says that in the latter days there would be a famine in the land. So my opinion is, and not that I've got a any kind of Monopoly on truth, but uh, my belief is knowledge shall be increased is talking about technology. I mean, let's face it, people, 200 years ago, uh, for thousands of years, up until two, 200 years ago, people were using horses for transportation. And then, you know, we've gone from horses to trains and cars and automobiles, right? And airplanes, jets, uh, computers. I mean, knowledge has exploded, people. It just exploded. In the book of Amos, chapter 8 and 11, we read, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And people, I think that's what's going on today. Uh, I don't know. So that's why I think it's um, the knowledge for the last days is going to be knowledge of technology, uh, spoken of in um, Daniel 12. In Hosea chapter 4 and verse 1, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Verse 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Oh, yeah. In Vero, Hosea 6.6, 6, For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Now, in Habakkuk 2.14, in the end, uh, during the millennial reign of Christ. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. But um, we're not there yet. Malachi 2.7 For the priest's lips 
should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. All right, in Luke chapter 1, uh, Zacharias was a priest who was the father of John the Baptist, who Jesus said was of all the prof of all those born of women, there was not a greater than John the Baptist. And I tell you what, that's when Jesus says there's not a greater than John the Baptist, I believe him. Verse 67, Luke 1, 67. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us and the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Oh yeah, and, and people will tell you that, well, everybody can be saved. Really? Really? So, people that hate God's people, that hate Jesus Christ, can be saved? Really? You believe that? I don't. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham. Not the whole world, people. Abraham. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation." to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and racked strong in spirit and was in the deserts until the day of his showing unto Israel. You know what? Uh, just so that you know, lawyers uh, back in this day were doctors of the law. In Luke 11, verse 52, Jesus says, Woe unto you lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered in, ye entered, ye entered not in yourselves. And they that were entering in, ye hindered. So not only are they not going to enter into the kingdom, but they were hindering those that were going to enter in by, you know, giving them false knowledge, right? All right, so we know that there's good, got good godly knowledge, and then there's knowledge of evil. Romans chapter 1, verse 26. For this cause, God gave them up. I guess you could say God gave up on them. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Think lesbos, right? And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Oh, they didn't want to keep God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. You know what? When you don't want God, God don't want you either. God will give you up to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient 
being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers. Yeah, and you could keep reading, but I think you're getting the general idea. What do you think? Paul writes in Romans 3.20, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. See, we wouldn't have any knowledge of sin if it wasn't for the law. If the law didn't say, Thou shalt not kill and you are a murderer, well, that's how you know, you know. Let's see. You know, let's go to the book of Ephesians. Chapter 1, verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Ephesians 3, 4. Whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. 319. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. 413. Ephesians. Till we come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of of the fullness of Christ. All right, Colossians 1.10, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. In 2 Peter 3.18, we write, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now, both now and forever. Amen. All right, I guess this is going to be uh, part one. This was knowledge, and I guess wisdom is going to be a part two. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.